Hey everybody, it's JR back with another truck camper renovation video and what I'm working on today is the bubble windows. <laughs> So these are those acrylic bubble windows that sit in the front of the camper. And like I said, I think this is kind of makes it stand out from the others. I really like the look. It's kind of futuristic, maybe a little bit space age. And I'm a kid of the space age. You know, I grew up in the 60s, watched the moon landings and all that kind of stuff. So I guess it kind of resonates with me. Like with all acrylic, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, there are some basic principles and processes you do when you're, when you're restoring acrylic like this. And uh, the first tenet I want to make sure that you do is that you start with the least aggressive method. And this is true for basically all body work or anything that you're going to be working on the finish. If you're working on the finish of your RV, in other words, maybe say you're polishing out scratches and stuff in the finish, you always want to start with the least aggressive method. So what I did was I bought some supplies on Amazon. Uh, I'll put links to all this equipment in the video description if you'd like to support the channel. Remember, as an affiliate, I get a small commission, but you pay the same price, and your help is appreciated. Anyway, so not very expensive stuff that I ended up purchasing. I got a set of polishing pads for my DA. This is a Harbor Freight a Central Pneumatic uh, Adjustable Speed uh, DA, or an Orbital Polisher Buffer. And then we've got some sandpaper. I bought two different sets of sandpaper, mostly because uh, Neither set had uh, what I needed. <laughs> well, they both had what I needed, but not totally what I needed. And I needed some more wet dry sandpaper anyway, because I've got some projects I'm going to be needing it for. So I bought this Duragold. I've never used this before. It looks like really good paper though. And it comes and ranges from 150 grit all the way up to 3000, okay? Now, 3000 is pretty high on the grit scale, and that may be as far as we need to go with this window when we're sanding on it. But if we need to go higher, I thought I better have my ducks in a row. And so I bought some additional grits, and these are really super fine grits. So this one starts at 3000 and goes all the way to 7000. All right? So we're going to, again, start with the least aggressive, and that's going to be cleaning them with glass cleaner just to see what we got to start with. They're pretty badly oxidized. I suspect that we're going to have to sand on them quite a bit to get the surface down to where it's clean and shines again. So let's start with that. Oh, I guess one more thing that you're going to need. Some microfiber towels. I have lots. These are the kind you get from Costco in the big bundle for 15 or 18 bucks. Uh, I picked these up over at Harbor Freight the other day. They had a deal on them. You got four for a dollar. So, but I'm going to start with these. These are old and tired and dirty. And so we'll start with these and some cleaner here. And let me reposition this camera. So let's just go in here and see what we got to start with. Yeah, there's a few scratches in them that we're going to have to take care of. A little bit of probably tree sap there. They're pretty filthy overall. And then we still have to work on getting all of this uh, adhesive, what's left of it. This is an adhesive, excuse me, that's butyl tape. And there's going to be a bunch of it on the back side there. I've scraped most of it off and kind of worked up most of this, uh, just removing the butyl tape. And we're going to try some isopropyl alcohol on that. So these are going to dry out here. Let's see if that uh, isopropyl will take off this adhesive residual. And it's working pretty good. You don't want to use anything that is solvent based on acrylic plastic. So you don't want to use anything like mineral spirits and especially not acetone. Now I have these here because they're great for cleaning in other situations, but not when you're working with plastic. Acetone and well anything that is solvent based will melt the plastic and make a mess. All right, so we're not bad. Let's keep working a little bit on this acrylic or the, the garbage here from, I'm just gonna get that nice and wet. Yeah, that's cleaning up nice. I'm very happy with that. And again, isopropyl alcohol won't damage 
the acrylic plastic. Well, that's looking pretty decent. There's a little bit of a ridge here, but I think we'll work on that with some sandpaper. I need a little bit of scraping on this, and I want to be careful I don't scratch the windows. So you can use a plastic scraper. Uh, I'm going to use metal one here, but I'm going to wrap it in this towel. And yeah, that's working really good. All right, this is clearly going to take a while and require some elbow grease, but that's okay. So we'll go to time lapse. I'll put on some music. I'll come back when I get ready with the next step. say 20 25 minutes to really get all of this old butyl tape off of here it was a real pain plus on the inside here there, there was some velcro in these corners that uh, the old owner had put in here because they had uh, uh, that bubble what's it called uh, come on reflectix <laughs> I knew it had come to me and so it's really sticky in some spots I don't know let me uh, let me get this camera over here so you can kind of see. So there's the remnants of that old adhesive. And a lot of it's coming off just by rubbing on it, but an old trick I used to use, and you want to use a very little bit of this and don't get it on a lot of the window, because again, this is a petroleum-based product. It could potentially melt the acrylic. But I think I'll be okay if I just take a little bit of this on this towel and we're just going to work it here and see how it takes it right off and now we'll go back with some alcohol this rag is still plenty wet with alcohol and we'll wipe it off with alcohol and so that kind of gets us to where we want to be now we're going to start sanding as I mentioned you want to start with the least aggressive method and so we're going to wet sand that's important So I have in this bottle just a little bit of dish soap, just a couple drops in some plain tap water. Uh, I'm going to use that for sanding. I think I'm going to start with a thousand and we'll go up from there and or maybe down from there. One thousand is pretty fine stuff. Okay, so hopefully now this is going to really fog these windows up, but we're going to get that back. Don't worry about it. So let's just get them a little bit wet here. Let me move you over here. And just a matter of starting to sand. I can tell already these are going to clean up nice. You can see all the old dirt and oxidation and everything coming off of them here. I'll grab a clean towel here so I can kind of give you a quick peek. So we still have scratches in here, okay? I don't know, we're going to work on these scratches right here. Let's see if I can get you turned around over here so you can kind of see those. Let's see, if I get right here, can you see that? Can I get the, the shine out of it enough that you can see? What if I stand like this? Well, anyway, there's scratches in there, deep scratches. So we're going to work on that scratch for just a minute and see if that 1,000 is going to take that out. If it doesn't, we may have to go down to 500 or maybe 800. We'll try 800 and then we'll try 600 and we'll just keep dropping until I can get that scratch out. And lo and behold, that took that scratch out. 
so we're in good shape. Use plenty of water. Just put this towel down here to catch some of the mess. This is not unlike doing your headlights. If you have a if you have polycarbonate headlights, this is the very same process. You start by cleaning them, then you start with a medium grit sandpaper, you know, 500 to 1000, and work your way down. Basically the same concept here. You're going to be able to feel the surface too. And so if there's things going on on the surface, you might not be able to see, but you're going to feel them as you're sanding. When your sandpaper starts to grab like that, you know you got a pretty smooth surface. All right, we got quite a bit of, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna drop a grit. So we're gonna come down to uh, either eight or 600, whatever I have. There's 1,000, here's some 800. That will be, we're gonna drop one grit grade to 800, and we're gonna hit this again. As soon as I find my water. I like this sandpaper, it's pretty good. Sometimes you buy this cheap sandpaper and you get cheap sandpaper. slow process but it's coming looks like I might actually have to go down to 600 to get a good clean surface here it's pretty pitted over here there's something going on right there of the pits out. There's still a couple of good goobers here in there. All right, I'm gonna trade up to some music and time lapse. Okay, so this is what you can expect to see when you get done with the 1000. Now, during the time lapse, I went back and I worked on these edges because they were really rough. And they're still not perfect, but they're better, and I think they'll be good enough. So keeping with the idea you want to use the least aggressive method, I worked on these sides here, you can see a little bit. Well, let's, let's get number two running there real quick, if it's still got juice. So if you look right here, you can kind of see how it's shiny on one side and then dull in the middle. And so what those are is those were screws from the trim strips that were holding this window in place. And when the screw goes through the plastic, it lifts it a little bit. So I went back and I sanded these out. So I went clear to 220 and I just sanded the edges. I didn't sand the whole window. I just sanded the edges with the 220 
And then I went up to 300 to 320, wherever it might be. And then I went to 400. And then I went to 600. And then 800. And I did a really careful job with the 800 all the way around the edges here to kind of feather in this edge right here. However, a couple places I still need to do some work are down the middle here of this and then right here on this end. You can see here I still need to do a little work here. I didn't get quite into that seam. Okay, so you can kind of see I'm looking for uniform dullness across the whole surface. All right. And then also you can see when I was sanding here, I was sanding this direction. And so I got some scratches there I want to work on. And then here in the middle, you can kind of see here where it's dark, okay? That means that that wasn't sanded. Okay, so I ended up dropping back to 600 grit to uh, do one more sanding on this, and I'm getting there. I'm really liking the results. I still got a problem right here, and the reason I have this pencil is, as soon as you get this wet, a lot of these flaws are gonna disappear. And so, just like when you're working with veneers in lumber, you can come in and this is graphite pencil. It'll just, it'll sand right off. But you could just come in and say, okay, I got a little something right there. And if you just circle it, or let's say that there's an area you want to sand, like, you know, this area right in here. And so once they're, once they're marked like this with a pencil, uh, then uh, you'll be able to see that when you get the surface wet again to start sanding. And that way you'll know where to go sand. Okay, so I finished with the 1500, okay? And you can see the scratches are getting smaller. The, the surface is still dull, all right? It shines a little bit in the light, but the surface is still dull, but it's coming. It's coming along nicely. So we're gonna hit it with some 2000. So I hit this with 5,000. I think that's where I'm gonna stop. It's really pretty smooth. It's still cloudy, you can see that. But we're gonna take care of that right now. I'm gonna do that with some of my favorite stuff. This right here, Meguiar's Mirror Glaze, number 205, okay? They also make, I mean, they make a number of these. I like the 205 for polishing. Meguiar's also makes a, 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 a little stronger cut. And if you look on the bottle here, you'll see that um, this arrow here shows you how much of a cut this will take. And when it, what they mean by cut is, is how uh, abrasive the polish is. This stuff is also designed to break down as you use it. So as you polish more and more, the particles get smaller and smaller, and so it really polishes well. I don't think I'll need 83 since I went to 5,000 grit on the sandpaper. 205 is good stuff. I've used a ton of this on my RV. I polish my RV with this before I wax it. I'm going to use my DA, okay, and a foam pad. This is a blue 
the, the black might be a little finer. Usually that's the way the colors go is that a blue is a medium cut, a black is a fine cut. I'm going to go ahead and just stick with the black instead of the blue, change my mind. Get that on there. Now I like to get a little water on the pad. Never want to hit a dry pad. Never want to go with a dry pad on your surface. So I'm just, just going to work this in. And then I'm going to flip this on and let the water fly off. Okay, that'll help it not sling the compound around. Now just take this compound and put four or five patches on your pad. So, oh, this is a brand new bottle. It's probably sealed. It is. <laughs> All right, now we're ready, huh? Okay, just a few spots on your pad like that. And then I'll take and I try to tap on the surface and I'm gonna turn this down a little bit to start with. I think I'm going to do one thing here to keep this thing from moving around so much. I think I'll just clamp it like right there. Okay, that should hold it in place. Now, back to polishing. Again, you want to be careful that you don't dry pad it. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more compound on here just to make sure I'm not dry padding because the dry pad will put swirls in and we don't want any swirls. All right, I'm gonna crack open a brand new towel here. <laughs> These are only worth a quarter a piece. <laughs> but I'm liking the results here. There's still a few scratches here and there. This isn't going to be a perfect surface. But it's sure starting to look pretty good, huh? It's got a nice shine to it. We need to... I think I might want to hit it. I'm going to try a little bit. Well, I'm going to hit it again with the 205. Actually, change my mind again. I'm going to quick drop down to the 83. It's a little stronger cut. It should take some of these scratches out. So let's, and whenever you change compounds, you gotta put on a different pad. Since we're going with the medium cut, we're gonna go with this medium pad. Again, we're just gonna wet the pad. Just push it in, good. Turn it on so that it flips out. And give her a good shake. It's been a while since this bottle's been used. <sighs> Same drill. Some spots of this compound on here. And we'll hear it again here. I think I'll turn it down a tad though. 
a uh, little better. We're getting a good shine on it though, I'll say that much. It's coming along, it's got a good shine on it now anyway. But um, let's, let's give it another two, number 205 pass. Oh yeah, looking a lot better. Still got some scratches in it, but it's going to be all right. It's sure better than it was when I started. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh yeah, that's real nice. Looking good. What do you think? There's still a few scratches here and there in the surface. I might, I can see them. I don't know if you can see them in the camera, but I can see some scratches here and there. But I think I'm happy with the results. Yeah, these are looking really good. I got a few things to do on the edges here. I think I'll flip this around clean up the edges but damn they look good I'm really liking it I think it turned out good it took me three hours to get to this point <laughs> an hour of that's goofing around with cameras and getting everything so I got a couple hours into these but again like I say they're irreplaceable I suppose I could have them custom built but that would be hella expensive and I don't think I want to do that so I'm gonna put a couple coats of wax on them um, if you were going to clear coat, if you're going to clear coat, you're going to want to wipe this down with some uh, grease and oil remover, uh, wax and oil remover is what I'm looking for. Isopropyl alcohol will work just fine because, because this stuff has some wax component to it. And if you try to clear coat over this after you use the Meguiar's, the clear coat will not stick. So you need to get back to clean plastic before you do that. So if you like what you saw, give me that thumbs up. I always appreciate those. If you're not subscribed, just subscribe. Ring the notification bell because I have a ton of episodes coming on this truck camper renovation I'm working on. In a little while, you'll get to see these guys reinstalled, but that's a couple months out. But for now, it's time to go. Thanks for watching. I sure do appreciate it. Until we get together for another truck camper renovation video, peace. Yeah, these look good. Real happy. Real happy. Let's throw a coat of wax on it.